Well, my friends, here we are in Fairy Dazzle's home and uh, ready for an evening of story time. As you can see, I am sitting by our fireplace and it is on. And uh, the reason being is that we're about to get slammed with some pretty cold weather. So I've got I'm all bundled up in my special warm fairy coat and my crazy hat that um, I made the other day. This story is about a trip that I made with my son and my father, the Elf King, and we did it when my elf son, Matt, was about eight, nine years old. It was his very first cross-country ski. Uh, given the cold weather, um, given that we all have to persist and um, stay optimistic in uh, Canadian cold climate and whatever we do in life, I thought this would be a good story to read today. Also, I'm assuming that a lot of you are being asked to write stories at school and I thought this might inspire you, I'm hoping it will, to think about your own life experiences that happen and that can be a basis of a story. This story is called Best Friends Forever, Behind and Beside. Sometimes we are asked to be accountable to or for. Sometimes we need to accept blame rather than roar. Sometimes we are given the authority to act. Sometimes it happens as the result of a contract. But the greatest responsible act of all is when someone is in need. That time when we just know to respond with compassion and speed it is doing what is right without looking for a reward or a pat on the back. It's not one upmanship or an obligation or not being counting, ensuring equal stacks. This unconditional gift of the heart is not always given without restraint, often granted to family and close friends without a second thought or a complaint. This is what happened to one young man, Matt, and his older mentor who happened to inspire Matt's life from the outside to the center. Matt knew this fellow from birth to the present. They had a relationship that was accepting and extremely pleasant. Graham Pooby was the name of this special coach and guide. He revered his grandfather like the ocean tides. Over the years, they would play pool, cards, swim, hike, and ski. There was always a playful tone of joking, guaranteed. Grand Pooby would guide Matt's dreams to be a businessman. He would say, Matt, think about the choices you make. Always set goals and plans. They accumulated a number of adventures that were challenging and fun. When Matt was eight, his grandpa took him on his first cross-country ski run. They left at nine o'clock in the morning just as it began to snow. Grand Poopy was so excited as there was an ice castle in the forest that he wanted to show. Matthew, you have to see this remarkable glass-like sight, a mini frozen waterfall off the other lake, not too far to cause fatigue or fright. Matthew, excited to take his first big trailblazing adventure on skis, bundled up warm as it was particularly cold, oh, and he didn't want to freeze. Off they set, Grand Pooby smiled, saying, Follow me, I will take the lead. They forged through a curtain of fluffy snowflakes with comfortable speed. The forest was breathtaking, blanketed in frothy white crystal mounds. As they descended further, the swoosh of ski blades were the only sounds. 
when they reached Lake William Henry, the snow was thicker than a wall of cold cotton balls. A little bit daunting, but nothing was going to stop determination to view these falls. They ventured onto the frozen lake, only being able to see about 10 feet in front. Now Matt was getting tired and started to ask, how long? And grunt. Grand Pooby turned back to see his grandson's hat entirely white and cheeks beet red. Come on, Matt, we can get there. It's not too far now, he said, persisting on with anticipation to see the colossal ice castle. The, ten minutes later, the Grand Pooby stopped for a rest as the thick snow was becoming a skiing hassle. He turned back to see Matt, eight feet behind in a crying heap in the snow. Grandpa, I'm cold. My legs can't move. I'm going to die. Just leave me and go. Matthew, stand up. You can do this. The castle is around that short bend. Grand Pooby skied back, helping him up, encouraging words he did extend. Matthew followed behind his Grand Pooby like a lost, struggling baby duck. Grand Pooby tried to distract him with chicken jokes, attempting to lighten the mood with some playful yuck yuck. As promised, in no time they reached their destination. Matt was awestruck with this natural, magnificent ice creation. Before him, he saw a towering sculpture that looked like milk had cascaded off the hill crest and froze midair. At the base, there was a cave-like opening. Inside, there was a ridge that looked like a chair. Matt and Grand Pooby crawled in, having a seat, pulling out their oranges, chocolate, and juice. Matt, sometimes to get what you want, there is no room for complaints or an excuse. Matt looked around at the marvelous ice for fortress and nodded his head. His great joy and a sense of accomplishment vanished any feelings of dread. After a short rest, they made the journey home through the now thinning storm. And in no time they were back inside, the chalet snuggled up in front of a fire where it was cozy and warm. Matt turned to his grandpa and said, Thanks for sticking by me out on the lake. That's what best friends do. They are behind and beside you when everything is at stake. Well, almost 12 more years of chats, swims, hikes, and skis cemented the bond between these two. Grand Pooby continued coaching and encouraging Matt as he matured and grew. Until one day, while visiting from college, Matt, in between working and studying juggle, he arrived to see his grandpa weak. His health had become a struggle. His grandpa was not agile and strong like the years in the past. Shuffling and laboring breathing <sighs> made for a sharp contrast. Grand Pooby, hey, are you okay? Remember how we used to play pool? Yeah, sure do. <sighs> Man, remember when you used to beat me at seven years old? You ruled. Then Matt said, are you up for game? You can show me a thing or two? Yeah. <sighs> I, I think I could manage hobbling around a pool table with a cue. They played in the... The Grand Pooby beat Matt this time, three games to one. With a wink, Grand Pooby said, Hey, it's about time I won. Matt smiled, then prepared some chocolate oranges and tea. Gramps, hey, let's have a chat about stocks in your garden under your favorite tree. They talked business, then started to reminisce of their adventures and fun. Then Grand Pooby started to cough <coughs> and said, uh, <coughs> sorry, I'm struggling a bit, my grandson. Matt smiled, gently patting his hand, and said, I remember you said best friends are there beside and bes 
behind and beside you when everything's at stake. Well, I'm going to be there for you like you were there for me on that snowy lake. From that day on, Matt changed his schedule visiting his grandpa a couple times a week. They would play cards, drink tea, eat chocolate, while Grand Pooby would laugh singing and listening as Matt would joke and speak. One day, Grand Pooby turned to Matt and said, Thank you for sticking by, bringing me such joy in my later years. Grandpa, remember, we are best friends. As their eyes filled with tears, I hope this might inspire you.